Welcome to the Knowing Pod- Co- Podcast. Welcome to the Knowing God Podcast by Hide and Seek Ministries. Great for kids and grown ups. This is episode number 35 of the Knowing God podcast for kids. And speaking of kids, I'm looking at three of them. Who are you? Lily. Grayson. Aiden. <laughs> what was your name over there? Lily. Lily, Aiden, and Grayson. Grayson. Okay, there we go. Good job. <laughs> and we are in part two of a series called Faith is Our Superpower. And in the last episode, episode we started talking about superheroes didn't we yeah who was your you guys named your favorite superhero who were they batman batman superman or i mean (laughs) spider-man you forgot you don't know who your favorite is it's (laughs) spider-man spider-man okay so batman and spider-man are your guys's favorites and we the reason why we started talking about superheroes is because it's something that you guys are kind of familiar with And it's just a way to help us better understand how faith works, is thinking of faith as a superpower. And so why do we need a superpower? We said this in the last episode. Why do we need a superpower? Do you guys remember? It's because we have to fight battles. Sometimes, even at your age, even as kids, you guys and adults have to sometimes fight battles. And in the last episode, we gave an example of what if you guys were playing in the living room and you broke my favorite lamp. And Lily said that she would lie about it, didn't you? Did you say that? Did you really say that? Yeah, she said it. I remember. (laughs) So you had a choice to make. We pretended you broke a lamp and you had a choice whether you would not tell me and glue it back together or you would actually tell the truth even though you would get in trouble. And so a decision like that is not always easy. You're trying to decide between the right choice and the wrong choice. And sometimes part of us wants to do one choice and part of us wants to do the other. And it's kind of like we're in a battle. Now, another example might be if a person goes to a doctor and the doctor says, okay, you're really sick and you're not ever going to get better. And But does that match what the Bible says? No. No, the Bible says that we're healed by the stripes of Jesus and that that person will get better. So now that person has a choice to make. Are they going to listen to the doctor and believe that they're never going to get better? Or are they going to believe what the Bible says? I would believe what the Bible says. Well, good. And But a choice like that is not always easy. And you can kind of think of it as like we're in a battle. You're in a battle of what to believe and what choice to make. Another example is if what if a person does something really bad to you? And the Bible tells us that we're supposed to forgive others, but is forgiving others always easy? No. No, it's not always easy. No. But we have to make that choice. Somebody did something wrong to us and we have to choose, are we going to really forgive that person or not? And that can be said that we're in a battle to make that choice. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does. We know that we have all kinds of different battles that we might be in. Those are just a few examples. But here's the question. If we're in these battles, how do we know if we win the battles? So if we play a basketball game or a football game, how do we know who wins those games? They have points. And whoever has the most points, what? Wins. 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 But we don't have points when we have these kind of battles and we make choices, do we? No. So we know that we win the battle when we make the choice that matches what the Bible says. The good news is, is that we don't have to fight any of these battles on our own. Jesus already did all of the work when he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. And he has given us a superpower. And that superpower is our faith. But Here is the thing with faith, though. If I say, here you go, here's your superpower, but you have no idea how to use it and you have no idea how it works, is that going to do you any good? No. 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 So in order to be able to properly use our faith, to use our superpower, we have to know how it works. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn more about faith and how it works. And actually, we're going to, in the next two episodes, we're going to talk about six things. And today we're going to talk about three of those things. Okay? 
Okay. Okay. So thing number one is this. Every believer has been given the same faith. Okay. Every believer has been given the same faith. Aiden, why don't you read the last phrase in Romans 12, 3 in the King James Version? I know it says hath, but you can say has. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay. So God has given every man the measure of faith. In other words, God has given every person who believes in Jesus the same faith and the same amount of faith. Now, every person in the world can have faith in something. Lily, you're sitting in a chair, aren't you? Yeah. Would you have sat in that chair if it looked like it was broken and about ready to fall down? No. No. (laughs) You wouldn't have either. So you had to have faith in that chair that it was going to hold you up before you sat down in it. Right. Right. And let's just say we got on an airplane and we were going to fly across the world. In order for us to actually get on that airplane, we would have to have faith that that airplane was actually going to take us to where we were going. Right. Right. So any person in the world can have faith in things, but that's not the kind of faith we're talking about. We're actually talking about a special kind of faith that is given to us as a gift from God. Now, not everybody in the world can have this special kind of faith. Who do you think gets this special faith? People that believe in Jesus. Exactly. Only. That's what I was going to say. Good. And this special kind of faith is what we use when we have faith in the Bible, but when we believe that the Bible is true and it's how we receive blessing from God and receive all the things that God promises us, all those wonderful things, we use our faith to receive those. This is a special kind of faith that is given to us by God. And everyone is given that same amount of that special kind of faith if they believe in Jesus. And we are talking about that kind of faith today, okay? So I'm going to read that verse in Romans 12, 3 again. It says, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So let's say you go to church and you see your pastor there or you see a Sunday school teacher and they seem to know a lot about the Bible. But guess what? You have been given the same amount of faith as they were given. Kids have been given the same amount of faith as their parents. And all of us here in this podcast, we've been given the same amount of faith as all the other people listening to this podcast, as long as they believe in Jesus, right? Right. So every person who believes in Jesus has been given the same amount of faith. So that is number one. Let's go to number two. We're gonna, remember, we're doing three things. So that's number one. Let's go to number two. Number two is... You can make your faith grow and become stronger. Okay, Lily, why don't you read the first part of verse 20 in Jude for me? Can you do that? Sure. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. And Aiden, why don't you read the first part of 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 right here? We ought always to thank God for you because your faith is growing more and more. Okay, good. So those verses talk about building faith and growing faith. In other words, we have all been given the same amount of faith, but it is possible to build up your faith and make it grow. We can make our faith stronger. So how do you think we can make our faith stronger? Any ideas? Reading the Bible. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 4.4. Okay? Okay. Are you listening, Gray? Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what Jesus said. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Okay, so here's a question. What would happen if you did not eat any food for days and days and days? What would happen? You would not feel good. You wouldn't. And your body would become weak, right? You wouldn't have any energy and you wouldn't feel good. So, but what happens if we do eat food every day like we're supposed to? We would have lots of energy. We would have energy. We would feel strong, right? Mm -hmm. Our body needs food. It needs nutrients to help us grow and become strong, right? Right. The same is true with our faith. Jesus said we shouldn't just live on food that we put in our mouth, but we should live on every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
So what's he talking about? What words come from the mouth of God? The Bible. I don't know. You the don't? Bible. That's right. The Bible. So this means just like we can feed ourselves food, we can also feed ourselves the Bible. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Does this mean you should pick up the Bible and put it in your mouth and eat it like it's a hamburger? No. Gross. Maybe we should go and get a little ketchup first? No. No? Gross. <laughs> you don't think that's what that means? So how do you think we feed ourselves the Bible? Reading it. I think reading it too. That is right. It's just another way to say to read the Bible. It's like we're feeding ourselves God's word. So you guys have Romans ten seventeen memorized. It says, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's right. We can make our faith stronger by reading and hearing the Bible. So do you guys think it's a good idea to make your faith stronger? Yeah. Yeah. Because if we have stronger faith, then we're going to be stronger when we fight our battles, right? Right. And do you think it's going to be easier to win if we're stronger? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. But listen to this, okay? Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Here is the really important part about making your faith stronger. You are the only person who can make your faith stronger. I'm your mother, but I can't make your faith stronger for you. You are the only one that can make your faith stronger. And that leads us to number three. So far, we've said everyone is given the same amount of faith. And that we can make our faith stronger. And here's the third thing. Our faith has to work together with obedience. Grayson, what's obedience? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Does anybody know what obedience is? Um, so like if you're obedient, you're like obeying somebody. Oh, listening. Like, yeah. yeah and then you're obedient. Obedience. Doing obedience. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Aiden, why don't you read what James 2.17 says? Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Good. Faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. dead. Right. So if we have faith and our faith is all by itself, then our faith is dead. And do you think our faith would work if it's dead? No. No, that doesn't sound like a good thing, does it? Nope. In the last episode, we said that Spider-Man had the superpower of shooting webs, right? Right. He also does a couple of other things when he fights. Do you remember what we said? Um, spider sense. Spider sense. And what else does Crawling he do? Crawling up walls and stuff. Yeah. And so when he fights a bad guy, does he just use one of those things? Or does he kind of, they all kind of work together? Work together. Yeah, he uses all of those things. And that's kind of a way to think about how our faith works. Our faith has to work with other things. It works together with other things. So one thing that our faith works together with is obedience. Another way to say it is faith requires action. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that, okay? Okay. Okay, so let's go back to eating food, that example again. We said that we need to eat food every day to make our bodies strong, right? Right. But what would happen if we sit and we just eat and eat and eat and eat all day long, but we never get up and do any exercise? You would probably get fat. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that's what would happen? Our bodies probably wouldn't be very healthy, would they? Mm -hmm. Our bodies need exercise. We can't just sit and eat and eat and eat all day long. You can kind of think that way about your faith, too. We are supposed to eat and eat and eat the Bible, or in other words, read and read it. But then what should we do? We shouldn't just eat it, but we should exercise our faith. Does that make sense? Yeah. So how, yeah. Do, so how do we exercise our faith? When we do things that match what the Bible says, it's like we're exercising our faith. And when we exercise our faith, our faith will become stronger, just like our bodies would become stronger when we exercise. The Bible is actually full of examples of people being obedient and exercising their faith. If you turn to Hebrews 11, you can read about many examples of people exercising their faith. 
It talks about how Abraham was obedient when God told him to go and sacrifice his son. And it talks about how Noah went and built the ark, even though it hadn't rained and there was no sign of a flood, but he was still obedient and acted on his faith. It also talks about how the Israelites marched around Jericho for seven days, not knowing exactly what was going to happen, but they were exercising their faith. They were acting on their faith and being obedient, even though they didn't quite understand it. And in the same way, we should not only have faith and believe what the Bible says and trust in God, but we should be willing to not just believe and trust, but to also act on our faith, to do things that we're supposed to do, to do things that God asks us to do, even when we don't completely understand it. And that's one way to describe how our faith works with obedience. And that's something really important to understand. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's let's review real quickly what we've talked about today. Okay, we have faith and faith is like our superpower and it helps us win what? Battles. Battles. And we're in a battle by many times because of the choices that we make, whether we're going to make a good choice or a bad choice and whether it's going to match the Bible, right? Right. But we don't have to fight the battles on our own because we have faith as a superpower. And then we said that we need to learn about how faith works so we can use our superpower. And the three things we said were everybody gets the same amount of faith. We can make our faith stronger and... Our faith works together with obedience. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about three more things, and they're really important, so don't miss it. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you haven't subscribed to our podcast, we really hope that you do. We would also really appreciate it if you would go on your favorite podcast app and leave us a review and give this podcast a rating. It would really help us a lot to be able to teach God's word to more people around the world. You can also get a free printable worksheet that goes along with this episode. And there's also worksheets for all the other episodes. You just have to go to hideandseekministries.com slash podcast and click on the yellow button towards the top of the page. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope you join us again on the next episode of the Knowing God podcast for kids. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, Grayson, we were talking about good and bad choices today. And then you left at the end of the podcast and you kind of still got a grumpy look on your face. What are you so grumpy about? Go ahead, just talk. Aiden. Aiden, Aiden made you grumpy? Why did Aiden make you grumpy? He's being super mean. So what happens if somebody is super mean to us? We have a choice to make, don't we? On how we react when someone is super mean to us. And what choice did you make? Do you think you <laughs> made do you think you made a good choice or a bad choice? You're not answering. Did you win the battle? Aiden made you mad. Do you think you won the battle by stomping off and getting mad too? Well, I just forgave him. You just forgave him right now? Good. Now you have a smile on your face. So that's an example of what it means to win a battle and lose a battle. Good job. So now you're happier now? Good. I bet you're so much happier that you can have time or you feel like telling us a joke. Okay. Um, gotta think of something. Oh, got it. Would the sloth say you have a sloth? What? Something seems slow around here. I think you said that one in the last episode. Uh, <laughs> Alright, I'll come with a different one. Okay. Um, would the squirrel say you have a squirrel? I think you said that one too. I, I'm not telling that one. Okay. Would the squirrel say you have a squirrel? What? You look a nut. You said that. <laughs> no, uh. no, last time it was it was nut corn. Remember, it's oh, popcorn. Yeah, nut corn yeah. This time it was ooh, look at nut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like it. That was a good one. Good job, Gray.